The Bible Investigation Open Case Bible Study on the Seed of Aaron, John the Baptist Part 3 And welcome back to the Bible Investigation on the Seed of Aaron, John the Baptist. Um, in this uh, segment, we're going to be discussing how Israel was scattered um, before Jesus came on board. And that was a question that I had, and I found that answer. And before we get to that, we have to understand history. Now, in Old Testament, um, kind of towards the end of the Old Testament, where, well, I say the middle of the Old Testament. First, it started off with King Solomon, where King Solomon, he um, had many wives, and he did contribute to their gods. And God saw that being even in his eyes. So what happened is he split the kingdom. You had your ten king. You had your ten tribes, uh, which was under Israel, the northern kingdom, and then you had the southern tribe, which was Judah. And Judah had one more tribe under them, which was um, Benjamin. So you had the. So what happened is the land it, it changed, the format, everything changed it. So you had the the ten tribes under Israel, and then two tribes under Judah. Um, both kingdoms wasn't perfect. Um, Israel did more wickedly. You had, I believe, it was yeah Jeroboam. What happened is he said for he said um, he kind of he removed all the he well he kind of removed the duties of the Levites and replaced them with Dan had them chief priests and having um, um, idols on high you know of you know of high altars of having people to worship him and so on so on but they did weekly for a long period of time and so what happened is that god you know allowed syria um to take them out so israel was no more um and then somehow they was re they in the land they was replaced by non-jews um of gentiles you would say sumerians and then you had Judah. Now Judah wasn't doing doing wasn't doing all that great either. So when um, what happened to them? They was taken out, but they was gone into captivity captivity for seventy years under Babylon. So when they came back, the land wasn't the same either for Judah. Some of the lands was given away, and you know to and then you had Adumia that was on the other side, and then it came on the same side as Judah, right right under it. So it was kind of like, you know, um, what can I say? That Judah didn't have much land. But when we go into looking at the map of Herodian, the kingdom, during Jesus Christ's time, you had uh, Archelich. I know I'm, I'm, I don't know if I, that's pronounced right, but he ruled over in this purple color under Judah, Samaria, Judah, and then under Judah was Adumia. And then in the green part, you had Herod Antipas. And then the yellow part, you had Herod Philip. So those, you had those three, they was um, descendants of Herod the Great. So that's how the map was during Jesus Christ's time. Um, before we go any further, let's go ahead and read Acts 2 and go from there and see and see see what I'm talking about for is how they were scattered. Acts 2 verses 1 to 12. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together, and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? 
Parthians, and Medes, and Elamites, and the dwellers in Mesopotamia, and in Judea, and Cappadocia, in Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, in Egypt, and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews, and proselytes. Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Twelve, and they were all amazed, and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Okay. All the names that they he called, they were scattered, well, except for the Patherans, Patherans and Emilites, they was over in the land of Iran. But they called Koreans, Egypt, um, over here in Asia, you have Paphilia and um, what's the other city? Paphilia over here as well. But they was all scattered throughout this whole land right here and throughout the empire, Roman Empire. Just right, I say like right here. Let's close it up right here. And you can see they were scattered right over here. Cappadocia, Mesopotamia, and then also outside of this land too. And all the Asia right here. And then you come down. They was and also Judah and so on and so on. Okay, I want to add another something um, to get a closer at Egypt because we was also located there. So Korean and Egypt. So get an idea. We was also in this land because um, cause we because there was a lot of us, you know, with the same complexion, brown, black, dark skin, et cetera, et cetera. So I just want to show you that part. So okay. Um, they didn't say Macedonia, but Macedonians mentioned in the Bible as well. But just to get an idea and to see what is it that caused it them to scatter, you know, because here I am thinking, you know, when, when the scripture was talking about in tongues, they were talking, they were speaking their native land. I mean, the land that they was born in. So it's like saying, if I, I'm, I'm born in Germany. So if this would have happened, I will be speaking in German. Ich liebe dich. Um, good morning. Nur eins, zwei, vier, fünf, sechs, sieben, acht, nine, six, twelve. That's all that I'm speaking in English. I mean, speaking in German. That's another tongue, another language. It doesn't mean when they say in tongues, it doesn't mean you speaking some, you know, I mean, gibberish pretty much, but that's what it is that people are talking about. But what First Corinthians 14, verses 27 to 28. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two, or at the most by three, and that by course, and let one interpret. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church, and let him speak to himself and to God. But when, when the Bible talk about speaking other tongues, they were speaking in tongues at the land that they was born in. So you have to understand that they could go back into that land and preach the word of God to other people that speak the same language. So that means I could go back to Germany and, well, if I practice on my language of German, <laughs> then I could preach to my, you know, to German people the word of God or preach to my brothers, you know, the word of God. First the Jew, then the Gentile. So, but um, let's see, what was it that caused him to scatter out on throughout the Roman Empire over here in Asia, especially in Asia, Pamphylia, Pontus, Cappadocia, Mesopotamia, so on, so on, and Pamphylia. Um, I know I'm saying it wrong. Not the not this one, but it's another one. He mean for you. Anywho, let's let's get back to the scripture and see what was it that to oh. scatter. So let's get back. Jeremiah twenty three verses one to two. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people: Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away, and have not visited them, behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. Now, when we look at Jeremiah 23, 
the reason why I picked this scripture and the reason why I felt this applied to um, to the to the Jews, to the Israelites, to preach to the lost sheep is the key word was um, if we look at verses, I'm going to read verses two. Therefore, thus said the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed that feed my people. ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visit them. See, the key word was have not visit them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, said the Lord. So when it says not visit them, that that's the reason why Jesus taught the apostles to preach to them. To, to, I mean, it's correction. That's the reason why Jesus taught the apostles to go and teach it to the lost sheep. Which is the land? I mean, which which where they were scattered? Which I show you that map because they have not been visited. So you have these pastors, these Pharisees and Sadducees, and so on. They replaced the Levites. They pretty much kicked them off. Well, yeah, someone kicked them off the curve, just like how Jer Jeroboam Correction, Jeroboam. did the same thing to to Levites when they was in the land of Israel. And you had the Levites, they moved from the um, from the northern kingdom down to the south, so the southern kingdom, all of them from, from the north. So it's like history being repeating. I mean, history is repeating itself where you had the, you know, during this time you had like the religious sect that was taken over and they pretty much was, you know, doing their own thing and writing their own scriptures for the creating their own doctrine to make a to make sense. So this is the reason why this fits for that. So let's go further in the in the details. You have to understand when John the Baptist came on board, um you didn't it was kind of like all the Levi was knocked off. All the officers, you know, that was in place and they had other people sitting forth in place. Um it was, I, I don't know how it was it back in those days, but I could tell you that um, this is the reason why, um, because of 70 AD, because what Jesus said, I mean, what Jer Prophet Jeremiah said, I will visit upon you the evil of your doing, said the Lord. So all of that, so you have all the Israel, well, most of them, scatter on that map that I just showed you. And you have those Pharisees, Sadducees in that land of Judah and all of them was getting attacked by the Roman Empire. And that was the evil that Jeremiah prophesied that was going to happen in 23, 1 through 2 because of what they did to Israel, of scattering them. And history is repeating itself again, but we're, but us, Israel, we're in captivity, and you have to understand how we scatter. We were scattered for is a better job, for is a better opportunity for his land. And you look at it like I was doing a research on YouTube, and where it was, you know, how we migrated all of us from the south all the way to the north for his jobs. You know, in Detroit, Chicago, that's when you had the car industry was booming and stuff. And so on, so on. That's how we, the reason why we would migrate. For Gentiles, it would be like, you know, something like, okay, <laughs> if they're afraid, well, I don't know, but I just say that we move because we trying to get more pay. Um, we feel like we're being discriminated and so on, so on. But you know what? Let's read scripture. It'll tell you. Let's go in and read scripture. I'm not going to talk no more. Let's go ahead. And we're going to go to Matthew 23, and we're going to start with verse Matthew 14. 23, verse 14. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer, therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Matthew 23, verses 24 to 29. Ye blind guides, which strain at a gnat, and swallow a camel. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! 
For ye may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones, and of all uncleanness. Even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. 29. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! Because ye build the tombs of the prophets, and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous. Okay, when we look at those scriptures, it sounds like the Pharisees... Now, let me go back. During around this time, you have to understand that Judah was under the Roman Empire. So the Roman Empire was taxing them, and they had placed in um, publicans. So you had Jews that was hired as publicans that would collect taxes. So to get a better understanding of, of a publicans, you know, taxes, you know. Uh, another example, you know how those people, um, if you didn't pot, pay, you know, for your, your car, I think it's registration or something like that, where they'll put a boot on your car. Um, that would be an example of a publication, I mean, a publican. Or say, for instance, you forgot to pay your light bill and they all of a sudden turn them off. That is an example of a publication that doing service for is the Roman Empire. Just to get an idea, so you have to understand that the Pharisees had a, a lot of hate for those that work for the Roman Empire because they feel that they was taking money from the people where the Pharisees was overcharging the people just like how you have it today's um, Sunday teachers asking for money and don't even give them nothing for is, you know, to help them out. And where it says uh, in scripture in verses 29, woe well, unto you scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the septic, septure, um, septic church of the righteous. That's mean <laughs> that I don't have enough money to bury my loved ones. So it's like, when you are really, okay, you're paying tithes, which is high, and then you're paying taxes, and then you find yourself to the point that you have to move where you don't have to, where you could get a good job. So that's how, and that's why you have the, the Jews, the Israelites scattered among the Roman Empire within Asia and all the way down. I would not say they was in where you see where there was a lot of Gentiles, but pretty much in the area where that they was pretty much around people that looked like us, you know, black or brown skin or light skin. But but um, let's go ahead and read another scripture about these um, Pharisees. Malachi 2 verses 1 to 4. And now, O ye priests, this commandment is for you. If ye will not hear, and if ye will not lay it to heart, to give glory unto my name, saith the Lord of hosts. I will even send a curse upon you, and I will curse your blessings. Yeah, I have cursed them already, because ye do not lay it to heart. Behold, I will corrupt your seed, and spread dung upon your faces, even the dung of your solemn feasts, and one shall take you away with it. And ye shall know that I have sent this commandment unto you, that my covenant might be with Levi, saith the Lord of hosts. Malachi 2 verses 8 to 9 But ye are departed out of the way, ye have caused many to stumble at the law, ye have corrupted the covenant of Levi, saith the Lord of hosts. Therefore have I also made you contemptible and base before all the people, according as ye have not kept my ways, but have been partial in the law. Matthew 23 verse 12. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. Okay, that was pretty much self-explanatory. 
you know, what they was doing. They wasn't doing right by God. And, you know, Jeremiah prophesied against them. John the Baptist was preaching against them and what they was doing wrong. And same thing with Jesus was preaching against them and what they was doing wrong. So since I laid down the, the groundwork, since you have an idea of what's going on, how they were scattered, let's go ahead and finish this with um, Luke, Luke, the third chapter. And we're going to read from chap, um, verses one through 12. And we're going to have finished this out. And we're going to finish out on John, on the seat of Aaron, John the Baptist, part three. Luke 3 verses 1 to 16. Now in the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea, and Herod being tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip tetrarch of Iturea and of the region of Trachonitis, and Lysanias the tetrarch of Abilene, two Annas and Caiaphas being the high priests, the word of God came unto John the son of Zacharias in the wilderness. 3. And he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. For as it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. 5. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways shall be made smooth. 6. And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. 7. Then said he to the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? 8. Bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance, and begin not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you, that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. 9. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees, every tree therefore which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down, and cast into the fire. 10. And the people asked him, saying, What shall we do then? 11. He answereth and saith unto them, He that hath two coats, let him impart to him that hath none, and he that hath meat, let him do likewise. Twelve then came also publicans to be baptized, and said unto him, Master, what shall we do? Thirteen, and he said unto them, Exact no more than that which is appointed you. Fourteen, and the soldiers likewise demanded of him, saying, And what shall we do? And he said unto them, Do violence to no man, neither accuse any falsely, and be content with your wages. 15. And as the people were in expectation, and all men mused in their hearts of John, whether he were the Christ or not. 16. John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And that is the end of the seed of Aaron, John the Baptist, part three. Um, since we end this all, I just want to add something. A couple more scriptures to this, okay? We're going to go to Mark 1, and we're going to read from 1 through 3. In the beginning, the, I mean, I'm sorry, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it, as it is written in the prophets, Behold, I will send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. So we're going to go to Acts 13. And we're going to read from 20. We're going to start from 24. It says, when John had first preached before his coming, the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John fulfilled his course, he said, who think ye that I am. I am not he, but behold, there come one after me, whose shoes of his feet I am not worthy to lose. Men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, and whosoever among you fear God, to you is the word of this salvation sent. 
So he's letting you know the person that come after him, you, you should believe in him, in his name. So we're going to go to Acts 19, and this is going to tie us all. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesians and finding certain disciples. And he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? And they said, Unto John baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which, which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. Now, you see what I read in the very part that um, Paul was at Ephesians. So it talked about preaching to the lost sheep. So let's go over here, Jeremiah 23. Again, woe be unto the pastors that destroy the scattered and the sheep of my pasture, said the Lord. Therefore, thus said the Lord God of Israel, against the pastors that feed my people, ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doing, said the Lord. So he's saying that you, you know this, that your people is being scattered. You're not doing nothing but sitting there collecting tithes. And, you know, you want to be all. But anyways, saying, but back to what I was saying, that since you're not visiting them, God going to visit them with his messengers. First is first started off with John the Baptist setting the way for Jesus. Jesus came as a book, as a volume. And then he taught his apostles to do their duty to go, at t you know, search out the lost sheep. So where it says, therefore, thus said the Lord of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. You have scattered my flock and driven them away. So I'm just reading that part and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit. I'm just just want to read that part right here. So let's go to Matthew. OK, and it says these 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them saying go not into the way of the gentiles and and into any city of samaritans enter ye not but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of israel as ye have gone preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand and therefore that's the ending of the seed of aaron john the baptist part three i hope you learn something from this I have, especially, you know, I didn't know prophet, you know, Jeremiah prophesied in, you know, in chapter 23. But, you know, it all shows that God has not forgot about his people. He always going to send people to, to seek out those who's looking for the truth. And it got me thinking, truly got me thinking, you know, as I study all this, I have a strong feeling that God going to send his angels before Christ comes the second time. I strongly believe that. But anywho, my name is Azariah. This is the open case. I mean, this is the Bible investigation open case on Cedar Aaron, John the Baptist. Um, the next case I will be doing, I forgot to do uh, Cain versus Abel. And the reason why Cain killed his brother, I I was supposed to have that on November the 11th, but I something came up. So what I'm going to do is instead of, are we still doing, dealing with the case of brothers? So instead of doing that, I'm going to move that and that's going to be next year, 2023. Um, but I'm going to do the case of Jacob, which is going to be God of the 12 tribes. 12 sons of Jacob versus um, the Jewish people, a.k.a. Um, Herod, a.k.a. Herodians, a.k.a. Uh, Mount Seir, a.k.a. Edom, a.k.a. Esau. So 
uh, expect that. And then also, I'm also going to do a case on for December, which is the four cherubims. I haven't forgot about that. I'm definitely going to do that for sure. So I hope y'all enjoy this like I did. And y'all be blessed and be easy and have a good day or a happy Sabbath, so on, so on. All right, love you guys. Peace. The Bible investigation open case on the seed of Aaron, John the Baptist session have ended. Be sure to stay tuned next Wednesdays on the case of God of Israel's 12 tribes versus the Jewish, a.k.a. Herodians, a.k.a. Esau.